in humans episode four thoughts this episode is called make way for medusa so spoilers for everything mcu leading up to and including this episode the show is rated tvpg so will this video be you know what i think the show might be improving or more likely the show has simply worn down my will to resist let's dive right in so yes uh pretty quickly we get the the follow-up to the end of episode three dr Dickland explains he has a lab and you know maybe black bolt's wife is there you know he is making a good case for the you know and, and he claims that they can leave any time and let's see yeah honestly i am still kind of interested in seeing you know because like he's been working we learned in this episode he's been working with max and he does actually think that he can you know that it yeah that that black bolt's dna could could help he is you know he's a slightly morally complex character and yeah and let's see then we have the yeah um medusha starts just yeah you know she's yeah she's pointing the gun at louise to which louise very reasonably asks her to stop and says you could shoot me by accident to which medusha asserts that it won't be an accident when it happens she did she didn't say if she specifically says when wow and let's see then we have the um, um yes the the yeah um so yeah the, louise is driving away the the cop you know, yeah, she insists, you know, run the red light, and, yeah, cops start following them. And then Medusha, you know, leans out the car, starts firing on them, and afterwards, like, what, I didn't, you know, I didn't hit them, you know, and, and yeah, Louise is like, you, you crashed their cars. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, and Crystal and, um, yeah, Dave, that's his name. Yeah, <laughs> they get off on the wrong foot. And, again, we see this complete disregard for anyone who isn't royalty by the royal family. You know, she legitimately does not care that he, like, he wasn't trying to hit the dog. Like, obviously... We hate him for hitting the dog, but he didn't expect the dog to pop in out of nowhere. This is not a common occurrence. You know, just, yeah. And, yeah, he does say, you know, he can get vet aid for the, the dog. And then we get to the part where Medusha looks at the moon even though it's daylight this is the second time at least that they've made this like I can appreciate dramatic license but this is something you learn at like age seven the moon cannot be visible when it's that when there's that much daylight like it just you might as well say that gravity doesn't you know work in in this show that everyone can just float yeah um anyway medusha looks at that at the moon for you know and and by the, but yeah after maybe two seconds of that louise looks at her and makes the gigantic leap you live up there don't you like if this was the first really strange occurrence in the MCU, 
I'd be like, that's still a pretty ridiculous thing to say. I guess I can allow it. But there are so many other explanations. She's not even the only inhuman. If she were of Earth, she would be one of many inhumans on Earth. You know, this is like... This is after the Patriot came out as inhuman, or, you know, pretended to be inhuman in front of all of America, and Louise still jumps to, you live on the moon, don't you? And let's see. Um, what did I write? Right, yes. Um, Karnak helps out with, with crops. And we get a little bit of world building. Appreciate it. Um, about how, you know, up on the moon, they have to be extremely efficient with their crops. And, yeah, we have a little bit of romantic tension between Karnak. And I think her name is Jen. Honestly, that is not the least convincing thing on the show so far like she's been trying to help him and understand him and speak out for him from the right you know yeah as soon as she entered the show and, and had to deal with him at all she's been by far the most sympathetic of the the three that Karnak has encountered so yeah and honestly I don't know maybe it's just me I felt like you know, Ken Lung, really talented actor, other than on this show. Like, honestly, it really is only here. Like, he, he wasn't even that bad in X-Men The Last Stand. There's a lot of people who really don't come out looking good. Let's see. Right, yeah, he was, he was fine in The Force Awakens. Inside Man, Lost. Oh, right, that is him in, in the first Saw movie. I... I vaguely recall. Yeah, like, just... This is the only thing I've seen him on where he's just not very impressive. And that goes for a lot of the cast. But honestly, he, it kind of felt like he came alive in, in the scenes where he and Jen are like, you know... Yeah, there's a little bit of, of romantic... Yeah. Maybe I'm just desperate for something to, you know clutch on to in, in this show that, that isn't just... Yeah. And, and, you know, Gorgon explains, you know, back on the moon, you know, ev everywhere I go, I'm, I'm knocking over stuff, so I guess he's part cat? And... I think it is Auron who says what we're all thinking to, to, directly to Mortis. You complain a lot. Can we just, like, not do, like, oh, this character is supposed to be really, you know, ominous and, and scary when the character ends up being just kind of whiny and annoying? It's, you know, like, I, I... I'm not saying that it's necessarily wrong for someone to be whiny and annoying, as long as they're not dangerous, you know, as long as we're not supposed to be scared of them. I'd like to think I am, am not scary and yet rather whiny and annoying, but they had the same problem on Heroes Reborn, even though Heroes itself, the, the core show before the, the, you know, revival thing, did really well on that. There's a bunch of villains on heroes none of them ended up just being annoying and the david anders character easily could have been in the hands of someone who you know wasn't overflowing with charisma as david anders is like go back and listen to some of those lines again like it really it could very easily have been grating and let's see I appreciate that Louise is, you know, once once they're in the um, motel, I guess it is the like, or is, do they say hotel? You know, Louise starts to to 
you know, have a very, yeah, say again what, you know, the audience has been thinking, Medusha is very annoying, you know, you messing with my stuff doesn't help, neither does pacing, which, which is true, the, the show is messy, it has bad pacing, and Medusha is not helping matters. And yeah, then we have Max trying to appeal to the genetic council and, and saying, you know, can I have your consent to, to make this, you know, I, I know you're saying we shouldn't be making this genetic decision and, and like, yeah, it's just. I have things to say. I'll I'll get to them fairly fairly shortly, I think. Um Yeah, and and I will say I did not hate Medusha running back to the the room and, and getting the the rocket. You know, when when they knocked, wouldn't have minded she was like, I'll be right out. And yeah, like honestly, kind of, kind of sweet when Jen, like, tries to teach Karnak how to how to swim. You know that that was, yeah. And then we have the line, you know, your I forget his name, but you know the the was it R Reno maybe, you know, sometimes exhibits psychopathological symptoms, and Jen responds, "He's a New Yorker," so. Which, like, wow, that's, I mean, I appreciate that there's a lot of American media that, like, makes fun of New Yorkers, but, yeah, like, that's, holy crap, and, let's see, yeah, I kind of wish that she had waited for Karnak's consent before kissing him. And then, you know, Medusha finally, you know, yeah, she's been, she had a guess, and it turns out to be incorrect, about what the, the little rocket was, was for, you know. She, yeah, she think, yeah, when, when Louise points out, what if your teleporting dog does not work out for you, which is an extraordinary sentence. And, and yeah, you know, Medusha is like, I'll fly to the moon on your little rocket. And Louise explains, uh, you know, that that rocket contains her father's ashes. And it's just heartbreaking to think that Medusha can't use it to fly. And then we get to the line that is the exact point where I decided to rename Medusa Medusha. So yes, I appreciate Medusha also lost her parents, you know, did not think it was necessary for her to, to be little, you know, Louise is talking about, you know, my father died hoping to go to the moon, I try to make sure to, you know, to make sure it can, can have, you know, yeah, to, to go to the moon. And Medusha is like, oh, boo-hoo, you know, my parents are dead too. Your father, you know, was, was really ignorant to, to be, you know, he wasted his life, which just... She's been helping you for this entire episode. Even after you stop pointing a gun at her, you know, right up against her face, threatening that you would shoot her on purpose eventually and that's how you treat like this would be out of line if she said it to Auron but to Louise like how are these the characters we're supposed to empathize with like a minor rewrite and Medusha is one of the antagonists like literally you don't have to change very much about her character, you literally just have to have her out of of her own will join Max, which you know that would be it would be 
you know, misogynistic trope, this thing of, you know, a woman just, yeah, serving her own needs. So, wouldn't be for it. I'm saying you, I think they should have changed Medusa's character just from the ground up, completely changed everything about her. Let's see. Like, at least, if the thing about, you know, trying to outdo Louise's trauma about losing their parents, if that had at least come right after the thing about, you know, oh, well, pff, it's silly that you go by Medusa because you have short hair, you know. And then she even says, it wasn't my decision. And Louise is like, well, you know, when you change your haircut, you certainly did, you know, new hair, new me. And it's like, again, why some, every so often, characters on this show just don't pay attention to what other people say. This is like when Black Bolt just walked out as the, the, person working at the store is like you have to pay for that like we know that these characters can like yeah moving on let's see yeah and and you know finally medusa starts to, to war with louise you know i like you louise and i just want her to to say to yeah, say to her what what Arnie and Commando said to, to to yeah said after I like you. And let's see, I do appreciate Louise being like finally you know, and yeah we finally get the explanation as to why Lockjaw got sloppy. This is at least two episodes too late. Like we saw. Lockjaw screwing up, screwing the pooch as it were, at the end of episode one, and by like the midpoint or late in episode four, finally we learned why. Like, I at this point had basically given up hope that we'd ever get an actual explanation for it. And yeah, Black Bolt, and I think the other character's name is Sammy you know, realize, you know, we just went to a new prison. And, yes, then we get to Max revealing to his childhood friend, that you know, no longer friend, that he had the genetic council killed. And, you know, he says, choosing between letting... Our, our society stagnate and revolution is no choice at all. Now, I appreciate there's a number of Americans who, the moment they hear the word revolution, they think, oh, bad, that's bad. But are we actually... Like, you realize this scene is basically saying, Maximus, you monster... You kill the eugenicists after giving them a choice to cease being eugenicists. This is like, you know, forget like, oh, would you kill baby Hitler? This is like going back in time and being like, would you kill Joseph Mengele after giving him a choice? Knowing that if you didn't, he would continue the, the whole eugenics thing. Like, as far... So far on the show, they have not mentioned actual, like, genocide, but that is very frequently the logical conclusion of eugenics. You know, so just, you know, eugenics in theory, in theory, does not have to hype. Yeah, it, it sounds silly to even say because it is the logical conclusion. If you believe in eugenics, yeah, you know, if you have the power to carry out, carry it out, you're going to try a genocide. Not necessarily, you know, the the something. I will admit, I did not always know. You know, there are multiple stages. Let's see. Here we go. The you know the ten stages of of genocide. You know, extermination is step st stage ten of the the you know 
it's the second to last thing. But, you know, yes, the, the, um, it starts with classification. People are divided into them and us. We've already seen this, you know, you're either amazing or you work in the mines, even if it's really, really, like, we, we've been told, you know, he's really struggling to adapt to, to you know, working the mines. The, the, let's see, there's, uh, yeah, there's discrimination, uh, the second stage, symbolization, symbols may be forced upon unwilling members of pariah groups, I'm not sure. No, yeah, I think don't they wear specific clothing? It's possible that the the show hasn't done that one, but you know, there's discrimination. Yeah, they are being discriminated through the through the law. There's dehumanization. Again, you know, there's been multiple lines where, like, you know, like Medusha has literally said, "You are." I forget, it. this might not be verbatim, but she said something to the effect of, you are beneath me, how dare you do this? You know, I am above you, kind of thing. Let's see, and... Um, okay, then we get... Well, yeah, yeah, let's see. Organization is stage five. Special army units or militias... Trained and armed. I'm not entirely sure that you know they they like they have forces, but I'm not sure they're specifically. Yeah, I'm not. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. And yeah, polarization. Extremists drive the groups apart. Again, we've seen that. Yeah. So. The next stage, preparation, you know, mass killing is planned. That one, the show has not reached yet. I'm not, you know, there's four episodes left. Maybe they'll get there. Who knows? But that's still, you know, depending on if we want to say that the fifth one counts or not. That's five or six out of ten. You know, the, the, they're well on their way. To, to fully going through with it. Like, honestly, other than the fact that, like, maybe they need them to work, or they would say they need, you know, they don't need to abuse them, certainly. But other than, you know, oh, we need them for, for labor, you know, I'm not sure there's anything else prevents it. Yes, because they've specifically said, you know, there's too many of us. So, like, the fact that they have their slave labor is basically the one thing standing in the way of actually going the whole way with genocide against the the I forget if they've given them a name let's go with miners you know with an E not an O so just yeah um, but we're supposed to think that that Max is is the bad guy for just yeah moving on then we have the um, right. I did think the the thing with the gas was was kind of clever. Not sure why nobody tried to stop Black Bolt from doing that, but that was a, a decent enough, yeah. And I mean, hypothetically, it's it's sweet that you know Medusa and Black Bolt. Yeah, when when they're re reunited, they seem they do seem legitimately happy. And then they leave Mortis alive, wounded. Like, you know that you could just have changed. Like, you'd have to go back to, to writing. You couldn't really edit around this. But at the writing stage, just have them drive off. And then the audience sees Mortis still moving. Like, he's right there. What are you doing? Don't, don't you want to at least restrain him? Like, this is just... Yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, and the post-credit scene, the the old joke of of a guy struggling with a a bra and the the woman having to to help. But 
then we see that again I believe his name is Reno has killed the the last of the yeah it's the the yeah you know earlier we saw him like creepily watching Karnak and Jen and now he's going through with the yeah um so so you know that is ominous that's not the the worst lead in to to the next and yeah um two of the major characters that are you know that went from the moon to earth are finally back together so the ones that still need to get back together are Gorgon, Karnak, and Crystal. Yeah, there's there's three still out there, and and just yeah. Um, this is just this is taking an agonizing amount of time. Like this, suddenly the the Disney Plus MCU shows insistence which you know hasn't been completely consistent but a lot of the way to only do six episodes doesn't seem so bad 